those engines rev up and the over the inside and Jeremy McGrath for the bar oh right off the start the two qualifying heat winners are battling it out Kevin Windham in third Jeremy McGrath has taken the lead Ross is right there right where he needs to be Pastrana just in in the loop just off our camera the crowd's going bananas already here in the first lap as Ricky Carmichael doesn't want to let him off the ride the 125 East help that will come up to Indianapolis. Here comes Carmichael by the bar on the straightaway. He gives way, cuts to the inside against the icon. Here's what's important. I talked to Ricky. He goes, you know what? I don't know if Jeremy can race for 20 laps. The guy's off him for 15, but no one ever pressures him the whole way. That's what I want to do. And Kevin Wyndham getting into the act there in third. Almost rubbed with Ricky Carmichael on the turn. Carmichael staying close. He's patient right now. Right behind Ezra Lutz, David Villeman. And these guys got it, starting to slow down. Let's go down to Davies. Ricky Carmichael takes well, the lead. Amazing battle for the lead. Travis Pastrana keeps his Suzuki. 17-year-old rider has gone down hard. He's laying on the side of the track. They got a backboard out. He looks like he's up and he's moving, but he is not going to finish this race. Pastrana is out. Ricky Carmichael has taken the lead, and Jeremy McGrath is trying to fight back. Right behind him is Kevin Windham. Oh, hold on to your hat for the top five are in contention. This is the test for Carmichael. Wow. Oh, Big mistake right there. You can't force those against the ground. And Jeremy leaps over him. But Carmichael's got that far off. Can he do it again against the seven-time champion? And had a mature race in the season's opener, finishing in third. But right now he smells blood. And he cannot let McGrath get too far away. Wyndham is having his best race. Unbelievable battle we're having. This reminds me of Tampa a couple of years ago when Wyndham sat about where he's sitting right now and didn't have the pressure. He was able to apply it. He may be a factor here at the end. Well, if Wyndham and Carmichael get into it, that would allow Jeremy McGrath a great advantage. San Diego with his bar to bar, but Carmichael and McGrath. McGrath, I haven't seen him challenge this long into a race in quite some time. Going into that corner arc, he had to play a little bit of defense. You don't see that from McGrath very often. He's starting to have to ride Ricky Carmichael's race a little bit. It never happens. Ricky knows he's in the driver's seat. This is what he has dreamed about. You know what? I got a hunch. Jeremy is kind of glad to have somebody step up and have this challenge. They're at stake pretty much in the hunt with McGrath. And they cannot match the pace of these guys out front. They have just taken it to a whole new level here. Here's Carmichael to the inside. He's got the edge. And back. Oh, my goodness. Look at the acceleration. McGrath got out of that Yamaha. He knew Ricky wouldn't be able to hold the inside of that corner. Planned it perfect. Jeremy is such an intelligent rider that you not only have to beat him condition-wise, you're beating the greatest rider in the world if you take him at the checkered flag. Jeremy McGrath with a fourth place here last year. That was the worst placement of the season. He had another fourth place, I believe it was in Dallas. This is a big mental war right now. McGrath makes a mistake, can't do that triple, but Ricky couldn't either. A big mental war. If McGrath loses this battle. He loses a little bit of confidence. He gets a little bit of a dent in it. Right now, if Ricky can win this battle, he'll gain a lot and let Jeremy know he can win anytime this indoors. McGrath unable to pull away in the whoops. Well, the guy that won this race last year, David Villeman. Back to the leaders we go. And why not? Fight to fight action. Carmichael goes to the outside. And the crowd's on their feet. We still have five laps to go in this. McGrath blocked that corner perfect. He knew what Ricky was thinking and he covered the line. Ricky never raced 125s here. He was an East Coast fighter and here he goes with the ball. Ricky Carmichael puts in the woods to the inside. He takes the corner and once again they're saying hello to each other's boots. Ricky Carmichael has regained the lead. McGrath the hole. Look at that block pass. Ricky
Ricky did a good job to keep that bike on two wheels. His front wheel drifted all the way up over the berm. Oh, McGrath gets wide. And Ricky Carmichael is in the good position to take advantage of it. Remember, McGrath lost the front brake here last year. Look after the Rocco on this type of track, David. It's a little bit of an outdoor-style racetrack because the soil is so soft. The corners are starting to get deep firms in them. you got to pick lines just like an outdoor race. That's where LaRocco really shines. LaRocco is only three seconds in back of McGrath with ten laps to go. He got started. He said, you know, I know Ricky is going to be fast in time. He goes, and if, if it's not coming to me and i got to really take big chances to stay with his speed, I'll take my second or third or whatever it is, but for 16 races, I think I can beat him. Right now, Ricky has forced Jeremy to go to plan B. I'll tell you, Jeremy McGrath is not, uh, not out of trouble right now. Because he's got Ezra Lust behind him. And Ricky Carmichael can feel it. He can see it. He wins his second Supercross of his career, winning the San Diego Supercross. Mike LaRocco closing in fast with second place on his. Fifth. The happy young man from Northern Florida gets the congratulations of the seven-time champion, Jeremy McGrath.